If, like me, you have children who love to two-pee pushing machines at the seaside, one day they may challenge you, Daddy, can you build me one? This is what my children did. This is part one of my penny pusher project build. This is the pushing mechanism. Here's my diagram of my pushing mechanism. You can see it comprises of two motion rails. This is from an old server. A pushing platform the coins will land on. There's a stabiliser that keeps the, both the motion rails together. And you can also see the drive screw. The drive screw is what we use to turn the rotary motion of the motor into linear motion. The length of the motion rails is probably about 400 mil. I've actually cut these down just with a normal angle grinder. But if you do this, be careful that the ball bearings don't fall out as they did on me. Because they're a nightmare to get back in. If you do want some exact measurements for any of the parts in this video, please do leave me a comment. The movement on it is about 80 mil. This is enough for your coin pusher to push the coins. Remember this is just the mechanism that's going to sit underneath. Here's a side view of the pushing mechanism. You can see the drop platform the coins will fall onto once they fall off the pushing platform. You can see the white pushing platform from the video. You can see a side view of the motion rails that the pushing platform goes backwards and forwards on. You can also see here underneath is the wiper motor that powers it and the PC power supply that powers the motor. You can see that's the drive screw and that's running up and down. There's the motor going round. Here you can see a diagram of the motor and the drive screw arm. The drive screw arm length from the centre of the motor to where the drive screw sits varies how far your pushing platform will travel. You can also see the three countersunk holes that I've used to attach the motor from above. And obviously you can see the hole for where the motor actually rotates. Here's the motor with me attaching the drive screw. As you can see again, the distance between the drive screw and the centre of the motor is very important. Here's a side on view diagram of what's going on with the motor and the drive screw arm. Again, if you want any measurements of any of these parts, please do leave me a comment. OK, let's turn the coin pusher over and have a look at the power supply and the motor itself. This is the windscreen wiper motor. This is what's powering it. This is the power supply I'm using. Just using two wires off it just for testing. That's what I'm up to so far. To give you an idea on parts cost, the windscreen wiper motor cost me £9 off eBay. It's off, a, I think it's off a Saab or something like that, but any windscreen wiper motor will do. Um, the computer power supply is one I've just sort of reclaimed off an old PC. That's cost me nothing. The woods cost me nothing. Luckily, the rails, they've cost me nothing. But you can find similar devices on eBay for a couple of pounds each. So, what I've built so far is probably worth about £15 in materials to give you an idea on cost. As I said, any questions on the project, do let me know. Drop me a comment. Um, thanks for watching.